Just didn't make any difference what it was. It was if it did, it was contrary to what I thought God's word taught, or what I figured it taught, or what I felt in my own way of thinking. Beloved, it was from the devil. There's something that I didn't realize, and I, I didn't realize that man doesn't have the ability to change his environment or his circumstances. The only ability man has by God's grace is he can act right in the midst of his environment and circumstances. But only a sovereign God has the ability to change your environment and your circumstances. Consequently, every time God would speak in my environment, my circumstances in my life, I was misreading it because I would say it was of the devil. But you know, there was something I didn't understand. I didn't understand that the devil was God's delivery boy. I didn't understand that the devil was God's slave. I didn't understand that the devil was God's servant. And I didn't understand because of that, that my dear friends, the devil was a necessary evil for my good. And all at that, all, at, all the time I was praying, oh God, speak to me. Lord, I, I want you to help me. I want you to really do something in my life. I want you to bless me. I want you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. I claimed enough fillings to fill the Mississippi River a thousand times. And you say, what happened? Nothing. But my dear friends, let me tell you something. One day, I began to see that the adversity that I was running into in my environment, my circumstances, was of God, even though the de devil was the delivery boy. And when I saw that, I began to realize that while I was calling on God, God was already calling on me. Well, you see, the very thing that I was missing was this. I could sense and see the fact that I had a need. I knew I had a need. But I thought my need was for these folk and people and things and situations around me to straighten out. I didn't know that God was talking to me. I didn't know, my dear friends, that that was his way of saying and letting me see that I had a need and I needed to be changed. See, that's a little difficult to understand. That's a little difficult to see. Because when you, when you see what I'm saying, if you find out this is true, that God never allows you to have any kind of problem that he doesn't already have the supply for it. Now, I'll lay this out and tie some things together. In the economy of man, when you have a need, you start looking for the supply, right? But in the economy of God, God has the supply already on hand, and he allows the Holy Spirit and people, and, I, and most of all, he allows the devil to work in all kinds of situations. He allows dogs, 
cars, airplanes, mules, horses. <laughs> well, what, I mean everything. He allows all kinds of things in your life to just work havoc. So all at once you'll see a need. And when you get desperate enough about your need, and quit trying to straighten everybody else out. One of these days you'll get to Jesus and you'll find out that this was him allowing things to happen to you to create a problem in you so you get to him where the supply is and he's had it there all the time. Like, uh, for instance, which one came along first? Which one came along first? The first Adam or the last Adam? The last step. For he, and that's Jesus. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was before the first Adam. And before the first Adam ever came into the world, and Adam and Eve sinned, and there was a need for redemption, the God of atonement of grace and redemption, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was already available. And the fall wasn't to slip up. Let's be honest with you. With you is planned up. You say, did God plan it? Well, you settle it with God. I'm not interested in that. I'm more interested in the more practical parts of it. And that is the fact that God knew before Adam and Eve was ever created what they were going to do. And my dear friend said he wasn't going to have a robot out there. He's going to have people to love him because he's lovable and he wants to be loved like that, not like he could have made any one a robot if he wanted to. But anyway... Adam and Eve, before they ever sinned and had need of a Savior, there was a Savior waiting for them to sin. And my dear friends, when they sinned, then I want you to know there was a Savior just waiting to meet the need of their life. And you know as well as I know that the devil got involved there, but everything the devil did turned for what? For good when Adam and Eve turned to Jesus. And my dear friends, the need they, they had already had a supply before they had the need. Isn't that right? And I've got news for you. The supply was there before there was a need. And many, many times in my own personal life, I've got down on my knees and said, Oh, God, where are you? I've got a need. And I didn't need to call on God. You know why? Because he, he was calling on me. That people quote, we need to learn the voice of God. When we get in trouble, we start going, saying, oh God, please, oh God, I've got to have help. If we just be quiet and get still, we find out that my dear friends, God is already putting his call in. You may be like I was. I was misinterpreting it because the devil was delivering it. And I could only see the devil. But, beloved, when I got to seeing the fact that God was the vine dresser, the caretaker, and I was the branch in the, in the vine, and God was covering and governing my environment, my circumstances, then, my dear friends, I knew that he only allowed the devil and things involved around my life to happen to me to expose me and let me see what was in me so I could see that my supply was in Jesus Christ. And I'll assure you today that every person in this building that claims that they haven't heard the voice of God in so long, if you just get quiet, and still enough and let God talk to you, you'd find out God has been talking to you and you may not have even known. Do any of you in this building today have one single little problem? Do you? And most of you could testify the devil gave it to you. But friends, let me tell you, the vine dresser, the caretaker, 
the God of glory has allowed it. He's allowed it. And he's wanting your attention. He's talking to you. Now, how are you interpreting that for us today? You see, well, they heard the voice of God in the garden in the cool shed. I, I just wonder if you are hearing the voice of God today. I tell you, got news for you. He is speaking. He is speaking. And I'll tell you what that voice will do. If you realize he's speaking to you today in that adversity, you listen. And I'll tell you what he'll do. He'll, he'll only expose that in you that's not right. So you can get your cool set. You know, when you squeeze a lemon, what do you get out of it? Lemon juice? I read one lady's lips out there said lemon juice. But that's not right. That's an opinion. Good opinion, though. It's a logical opinion, but it's not a real opinion. It's not fact. I'll tell you what you do. When you squeeze a lemon, I'll tell you what you get out of it. What's in it? Now that's a fact, isn't it? And you know something? When adversity comes your way and God is trying to get your attention and talking to you because he's got something for you, you know the only thing that's going to come out of you is what's in you. Can anything come out of you except what's in you? And do you know if you are full of Jesus, you know what's going to come out of you? Jesus. And if something else besides Jesus comes out of you, do you know what's wrong? He's just not full of Jesus. And so really, that thing which sort of squeezes you, that you're looking on as a problem right now, and you're saying that deacon is my problem, that church is my problem, that situation is my problem, that's my problem. No, your problem is your reaction to that problem. For the Lord has allowed that problem to come to squeeze you, let you see what's in you. So you'll get to the right answer. Jesus, and he is the supply, folks. He's the supply right now for all that you need. But you'll never turn to him and get to him and, let, and, and realize he's talking to you until you just really get quiet and still. And realize that God, the vine dresser and the caretaker, the husbandman, will not allow one little thing to come your way that you don't need. And he's got it all planned. Job had a little problem. Of course, you say he had a problem with the devil. Right? I don't believe he did. I don't believe Job believed he had a problem with the devil. You say, why don't you believe that? Because he never did say anything about it. Isn't that strange? Do you know anybody in the Bible the devil worked on much of Job? Did Job ever say one word about the devil? That's in your home. You read the whole book of Job, I guarantee you. If I, yeah, you'll, you'll never find one place in there where Job ever acknowledged the devil.
Now, if you and I had the problem with Job, had we say, man, the devil's about to kill us. Job never said that. Wasn't it? Job never said that. You go back and look at that story. Sons of God went to worship, Job, or the devil went with them. See, the devil does go to church, folks. And the devil got up there with Job, with the servants of God, sons of God. And God said to the devil, now God said to the devil first, have you considered my servant Job? He said, yes, the devil said, what have you, you been doing? He said, I've been running to and fro here and there for him. He said, have you, have you considered my servant Job? He said, well, I want you to consider. He said, God wasn't upset. He knew. You see, God had something more for old brother Job. It's amazing about it. You know, these folks sitting in these churches, you know, they're so sanctimonious. They say, bless God, hallelujah. I'm filled with the Spirit. I don't need I, I don't need any more. But I got news for you, folks. You can be full of the Holy Ghost right now, but you can get more full of the Holy Ghost. Old Job was perfect, and he got more perfect. I never been in a service where if God was revealed in a way that I never experienced in that I couldn't get more right, even though I was right. Yes, sir. But take that spirit in you before God will get you more right, too. And so, uh, you see, God initiated Job's problem, not the devil. And all the devil could do was just what God, the vine dresser, the caretaker, the husbandman, would allow him to do. And all, my dear friend, that God allowed the devil to do was be his delivery boy. Amen. To make him more perfect. And uh, if his latter end was about how many times better than the beginning? Praise goodness. Do you want a double portion? Well, Jack, there's you a good sermon, son, on how to get the double portion. All these preachers want power. You know what I think about that? I don't think you know what you're talking about. And all these people want to get full of God today. I don't think they know what they're talking about. You say, why? Because the psalmist said, in this prayer, he enlarged me. And brother, before the resurrected power of glory can rest upon your soul and set your life aflame, my dear friend, you must go through. Come out to where you see, my dear friends, the devil in God's place. And every adversity that touches your life is nothing but God enlarging you, calling you to that supply that he's had waiting on you, my dear friends, for eternal ages. As a way for the double portion, Job never recognized the devil. Did he? Not one time. Boy, that's good. Now, he didn't understand, did he? But he said, though he slay me, I'll not forsake him. Old pressure. He didn't understand. The folks he stuck in there. And he saw God, not the devil. Say, folks, in that little problem you're having today, who do you see?
ਸਾਥ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹੋਣ ਮੇਰੇ ਸਾਥ ਗੋਨ ਟੂ ਮਾਈ ਹਾਰਟ ਬਿਲਵਡ but we call it versity and i like it god the lord speaking we just didn't realize him him and he's warning us he's talking to us and as long as you see it as the devil my dear friends you'll keep trying to change your environment your circumstances and you can't do it you can change do all you want to but only god can change your environment circumstance what he say in psalms he said unless god builds a house it's built in what vain he said listen unless god watches over a city the watchman really watches in vain he said listen that watchman can't keep that city god has to do it he said a man can build that house god has to do it and my dear friends listen you can't change your circumstances and your environment today regardless of what they are you can't but god can and folks there's no problem too hard for god is it you name it is it too hard for god is it too big for god is it too difficult for god is it no not one but you see you've got to come to the point where you could try and change your environment your circumstances and get to the simple place by the friends where you see that those adversities that you have they're gone and they have been sent your way and the devil possibly is a delivery boy and i admit if you look at them in the human sense all you going to see is the devil but if you'll get to looking at the new god sees and see god in us the first thing you know you'll like right you'll in all things give thanks you'll praise god you'll know it's god speaking and you'll say lord what are you saying to me and you'll quit jamming the line because you get down to know oh, God straight not that preacher God straight not that deacon God straight not that person God straight not this one and you will say God I'm listening what do you have to say and see when you get what God has to say to you you become submissive to God then you come to the place where you can resist the devil and he can flee but you can never come to that place till you come to the place of submission to God seeing God in all things remember what Joseph said he said you said to his brothers he said you did it for hard but what about it? he said God was with me all the time amen Now friends, haven't you been praying that God would fill you with the spirit that you can make you more usable? Haven't you? Well, when the adversities and difficulties and problems start coming your way, why do you run? Why do you rebel? Why do you say they are of the devil? Why do you reject them? all the Lord to do is answer your prayers. He's pruning you. He's enlarging you. He's making your capacity, your capacity larger so you can be a greater container of Him and enjoy the glory and the praise of God in your life. this of it Paul and I share this in quotes because I realize it will over time and I know that you're tired 
and uh, you probably already heard more than you're going to live out. And that's very tragic to hear so much and not live it. And thank folks, that's dangerous. But you see, there's a little secret in Paul's life. One day at Philippi, he was beaten. Paul could have said, I'm a Roman citizen. Why didn't he? Why didn't he say that? They would not have beaten him. Why didn't Paul say, I'm a Roman citizen? Even as he was beaten and put into jail, why didn't he say, I'm a Roman citizen? They would have taken him out of jail. Why didn't Paul say, I'm a Roman citizen? To the jailer. They would have bathed his back in oil, put him in the best motel, fed him the best lunch, and said, please, Paul, don't say a word about it. No, they committed a crime. Why didn't Paul say that, Fred? You know why I believe Paul did not say that I'm a Roman citizen? He didn't see the devil in that. He saw God. We well, see in Romans 8, 29, it says that he, he has predestinated us to be conformed to the end to his image, that he might make us, or that he might be the first fruit among many brethren. And beloved, if the resurrected life of Jesus, the power of the Holy Ghost is going to rest in and upon your life, he's going to have to bring you to the place of death. For there is no resurrected life without death. And there's got to be a constant death in you that there might be life through you for others. There's got to be a constant experience like this. And my friends, Paul, I believe, realized that God was the vine dresser and the caretaker, the husbandman, and that he could not govern his circumstances and environment by his actions personally. He could have changed it. But I believe he knew God. And I believe he knew that God was allowing death to be worked in him. Now, you couldn't say that God literally put those lashes on Paul's back because God doesn't do anything like that. But my dear friends, I've got news for you. God was in every bit of it. But the devil did it. And you know where those lashes, where that jailhouse experience took him? To a point of death. Where only resurrected power could get him out. And he allowed it. He didn't say a thing about the devil, did he? The only account you have of it is at midnight. He said, Silas, let's sing. Let's praise God. And at midnight they started praising God. And you know what happened? They had revival. Sure, they had revival. You know why they interpreted the voice of God? They interpreted the voice of God. People always telling me, said, Preacher, God just not speaking to me. Yeah, he's speaking, folks. We're just not listening. He's speaking. We're just not listening. We're seeing faith. We're seeing people. We're seeing things. But we're not seeing God. We're not seeing God. The Lord is speaking. There's not one little problem that you have in your life at this very instant that God hasn't arranged. And he's knowledgeable of it. He's allowed it. And my dear friend, you are either seeing it as God talking to you and inviting you to him, or you see it as the devil to destroy you, to ruin you. And how you look at that topic is going to determine what that problem is going to do for you. And how you respond to all of that is going to determine how Jesus is going to act toward you. Right now. More folk in this building to this afternoon.
are nearer God than they think. But they wouldn't acknowledge it. I can stand here if I had preached along this line. Fifteen people would have walked by easily, maybe thirty, maybe half the congregation had time, and say, "Listen, preacher, pray for us. I've got problems." Amen. I've got a problem. And not realizing, folks, that it's God that's talking to us. Would you bow your heads, please? Father, we thank you for this fellowship. Lord, you're the God of glory that I handled and run our affairs and I'm grateful that today you are able ready to handle the situation and thank you for doing it in Jesus name Amen